Okay. Uh, now, uh, although you, you already had, have some insights now what the plus differential equation is, and you can even picture the shape of the solution, uh, I'm still going to give you a second understanding of the Laplace equation because that can relate the Laplace equation with electromagnetism. Okay? So uh, this introduction will force you to review basically all the contents in vector calculus. Okay? So in vector calculus, let's talk about some operators that you learned. So if you have a function fxy, which is uh, you take two real numbers, r square means this r with the bar next to it, that's called real numbers, and r square means pair of real numbers. Yeah, you, you plug in on a real number, another real number, and out comes what? How many real numbers? Just, just one, one, what? one real number. Okay? So f takes two values as input and gives you one value as an output. Okay? Such thing is called a function, multivariable function, or sometimes it's in, in physics they call it a scalar field. Right? Um, but then there's another entity here uh, in multivariable calculus. Uh, if you have an arrow on top, or if the font is in bold face, that's a vector, right? And you could have a vector-valued function, a two-dimensional vector-valued function. And such a thing would be like uxy, vxy, just like that. You, you have a x component and the y component. Now, this would be taking in how many values? Two, x and y will be the two inputs, right? So, it takes in two values. How many values does it give you back? One. No, it gives you one vector, but how many real numbers? Three. Two real numbers, because you have one real number, another real number. It's a two-dimensional vector, so you get, you get two, two real numbers. Okay. That's that. Okay. Uh, and such a thing is called a vector field. Vector field. So that's like a scalar field, that's a vector field, or this is a multivariable function, and this is a vector field. Now you could also have something that goes from R to R2. Uh, such an example would be R of t, where it's like ut vt, which takes in one value, value and gives you two. And that's used for representing curves because uh, you, you should think about this as you feed in time t and it gives you back the position vector which gives you the location of a moving particle. So if you have a particle moving on the plane at different time t and it's at different locations, right? Uh, that's what this expresses. So this is more like a trajectory of a moving particle. So, uh, in multivariable calculus, you deal with these three objects. Okay. You, you either have a many to one, which is called a multivariable function, okay. or one to many, which is called a ve uh, vector valued function, VVF. And you have many to many, which is called a vector field. Right? Uh, now, there are several operations that we also do in vector uh, calculus. In vector calculus, the first complicated operator that you learn is called gradient of fxy. Okay? Uh, often abbreviated as, well, we usually use this nabla of f, where, where this uh, nabla is defined as this vector of partial derivatives. Okay. So it, it, uh, you take 
of, uh, of multivariable function, and because it has two, two variables in it, you can do a partial with respect to x and partial with respect to y, and you can differentiate it, and it uh, gives you a vector. Right? It gives you a vector field. Right? Because the resulting thing, see, th this would be f differentiated by x, but it's still a function of x and y, right? And f differentiated by y will still be a function of x and y, so it gives you something in here. Okay? So uh, if you have a, a scalar field, and a vector field, gradient takes a scalar field and gives you a vector field. Now the geometric meaning of the gradient is the fastest increasing direction. Okay? Yeah. That, uh, that's something that you learn in vector calculus. It takes a while. Uh, you, uh, you have to view the interaction between the level curves of f uh, and then uh, see what the directional derivative has anything to do with the gradient of f and there's a formula like directional derivative of f in the direction of u hat the same as gradient of f dot u hat and from this you, you get you can draw the conclusion that uh, uh, gradient gives you the fastest increase in the direction okay? and of course uh, if you feel like oh I, I didn't learn anything like this then you can always go to my YouTube channel and watch all the videos on the gradients. It's good to review things because uh, a lot of times you, you just study for the exam and not really have the good understanding of what's happening, but only later you realize, oh, I really had to learn that. I, I, I need to know that, right? So it's good to do a review. Okay, uh, now the, for the vector fields, uh, there are two things that we can do, which is, uh, one thing is, you can take the nabla and do a dot product with this f. Now, how do you do a dot product? See, the nabla is this thing, and f is this. How do you do dot products? You do component-wise multiplication, right? So this, this times this, and this times this, and you add them up. That's how you do dot product, okay? So this would be taking u, differentiate by x, and then take, taking v, differentiate by y, add the two together, and you end up with a, a something. Now, can you tell me what kind of entity this is? Is this a scalar field, vector field, or a space curve? A two-dimensional curve. What do you think? What would this be? Scalar. Huh? Scalar field? It'll be a scalar field because there's no vector here. Uh, u is a function of x and y, so if you differentiate by x, it's still a function of x and y. Here's another function of x and y. You add them up, you get a function of x and y. It, it's a single value. So, so this thing can be evaluated at, at x comma y, and it gives you a single real number. Right? So what that tells us, uh, by the way, this is called a divergence, divergence of f, this one, uh, is that there's an operator called divergence, which takes the vector field and gives you back a scalar field. So the grid is not same as the LiPo, right? Hmm? Grid is not the same as LiPo. Gradient is not the same as what? Divergence? And the triangle. Oh, no, no, no. So NABLA is an operator, okay? Nabla is an operator, and this one is Nabla multiplied by f, where f is a scalar and, and Nabla is a vector. So this multiplication is a scalar multiplication. You can take a scalar and multiply a vector, right? How does that work? See, 
if you have a vector and you multiply by some number, that gets multiplied to both, right? So it's 10 comma 15. Just like this, if you have this f multiplied to this, then you get, okay. you get round x hitting f and round y hitting f. Two ways to so you get, you get this vector. Two ways to multiply. Yeah, there are two ways to okay. make. But this is a scalar multiplication, this is the dot product. Okay. Now, uh, you can do the same in dimension three, but in dimension three, there's one more operator, which is called a, a cross product. And you can take the, the nabla and do a cross product with f. And uh, you should know that cross product of two vectors gives you what? A vector or a scalar? Which one? A scalar. No, vector. vector. If you take cross product of two vectors, oh, yeah. you get a, a vector. Okay? So in dimension three, you have something extra which takes the vector field and gives you back the vector field yeah. where uh, that operator is called a curl. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's, that, that's so, so curl of f is no, nabla cross f. So this, this is in dimension 3D. In 3D, that, that happens. Okay? Yeah, it's hard to explain why it's curl. Well, I asked the professor who told us the oh. the calculus 3. Yeah, so, so uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I have the explanation on my channel. <laughs> okay, I will see. Yeah, yeah, okay. so it so <laughs> takes like 30 minutes. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's not easy to explain. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah. So, so to give you a very quick explanation of what this is, it's like you you can talk about circulation of a vector around the curve, and uh, you can take the density of the circulation go down to zero, and then you can talk about the rotation at a point of a vector field. But in 3D, there are three x and uh, rotation around the x-coordinate, x uh, x-axis, and rotation around the y-axis, and rotation around the z-axis. So you have a vector quantity in 3D. Okay. And uh, that, that's the curl. There is a, a two-dimensional analog of the curl, uh, which is called the nebla perp. I forgot what's the name of this thing, but it's basically embedding a two-dimensional vector field as uv comma zero, applying this one. But because if you have if you have a flat flat plane vector field, then the only rotation you can have is around the z-axis. So if you take the curl of this, you'll see that you get zero on x and y coordinates, but the the, the z component is non-zero, and that's called the uh, nabla perp. Yeah. And that one tells you how much the vector field is working. This same as the, there is a electricity and the, the magnetic. That's, that, that's what this is so used for. Like yeah, the reason I say that we have to do all the reviews is because the gradient divergence and the curl, the three things, are basically the, the backbones of all the calculations for electromagnetics. Okay. Yeah. Because all these, uh, what's that, uh, Gauss, Gauss law, and there's the, uh, what's that, uh, if, if you have something rotating like that, Lenz, Lenz law, or, no, there's something else. I can't remember, <laughs> but uh, that's, that's, that's all, all related to this, okay? All right, so, how are these things related to the Laplace differential equation? Well. Uh, I, I will spend some time to explain what divergence is today, okay, hopefully. And, and you will see that uh, in, in my proof that divergence is, it, it captures the flux of a point. So if you have a vector field that's going outside like that, then at this point, you have the divergence of the vector field as positive. So I'm, I'm going to explain that and also prove it. So after that, you, you, you'll see that this, this is true. Okay? If you have 
uh, a point where all the vector fields are going into it, then this will be a case where the divergence of f will be negative. Okay. So uh, another way to think of this is like if you have a small region around it, and if you think about the flux, you learn this concept of flux in, in physics too. Is there anybody who didn't take physics too? You didn't take physics too? I'm taking it uh, right now. Next, okay, okay, next okay, okay, section, okay. not this one. Next oh, one. I, I'm, I'm surprised so Some many of you haven't taken physics too. Okay, yeah. in, in physics too, you're going to learn this as flux of, of uh, electric field or magnetic static. field. Huh? Static electron. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about it. Right. Okay, and then, uh, so, so here will be around this region, you'll see that the flux is positive because there are more things coming out of it. Right. Over here, the flux is negative. So, so this will be uh, positive flux, and this is a negative flux. Okay. And then you can kind of see that there are cases where you have a point where some electric fields are going in, and some I said okay, you could say vector fields. Okay. So some vector fields are going out, okay? and for such points, if they're well balanced, you'll have divergence equals to zero. Okay? Yeah. So it, this will be the case where divergence of f equals to zero. So you have the uh, same amount going out as the same amount going in. Okay? So that flux will be zero. Okay? So that part I owe you. So right now, let's just accept that that's true. Okay? Then. Uh, I also said gradient points to the fastest uh, increasing direction, did I say? Yeah, fastest increasing direction. And now we have all the components needed to explain what Laplace differential equation is. Right? So, so what do we say on when divergence f is zero? Do we say no flux? Or like yeah, zero flux. Yeah, so zero. If you like, look at, if you take a region and see how much vector fields are going into that region and how many are coming out, they, they're balanced. There's like uh, some flux zero. through some point, but nothing. So, so, no, 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 okay, so I'm about to say it, okay? So okay. let's say you have a positive charged particle at one point and a negatively charged particle at another point. Right. Then uh, these particles create what's called the uh, electric potential. Okay. So electric potential formula is uh, negative k times q over r, where q is the charge, k is uh, some value I forgot what it is, or or maybe it's like I could be wrong, but it's, I think it's q over. 4 pi epsilon naught r, where epsilon naught is the electric permeability. You'll see that in, in physics too. By the way, it's a very hard course, so you have to work really hard to pass that course. Okay? But you're going to see that here. Okay? And uh, <clears throat> so you, you get that function over here. You get another function like that over here. Right? So you get something that's like, over here it goes up. And over there it goes in, and you get you get something like that, something like that, and then you probably have seen these uh, electric field lines. It's like, have you seen this? No, it's going up. No, it's going in. No, not going in. Thank you. Uh, have you seen this? Okay. See, uh, this is called the electric field, and electric field wants to decrease the potential. Right. So the the way it's defined is like is like you put a one coulomb charged part positively charged particle at this location, and you see which direction this uh, particle will get force from. Okay, so 
that this is going to be pushed from this positive charge one and this will pull it so you're going to get if you put a one coulomb charged particle here it's going to be going that way okay so this this pushes it that way this pushes this way and then some of these two two vectors because this is much bigger than the other one uh, the sum of these two will give you that vector so that's why you get this this vector here so you do that for every point on the plane, then you see this, this electric field. And then if you think about it, what's happening is this tries to go in the direction where the electric field decreases the fastest. Okay? What does that mean? That means that the electric field, the, the vector that you get from here, is not the gradient direction, but what? Gradient direction is the direction where it increases the fastest. Oh, it's not Negative not gradient good. direction. Okay, so this one here. So, so what you see is that the electric field, you use E for electric field, that, that's the, the negative gradient of the electric potential. Okay, that's what it is. And then, now you think about any location here where there's no charge. Okay. If there's no charge, what do you think the flux inside this region would be? Things are going in, things are coming out, zero flux. How about around here? What's the flux here? So on column charge. It's all going out, right? Positive flux. Positive flux. How about here? Negative. Negative flux, okay? So, what you know is that if there is zero uh, total charge inside the, the, the region, okay, then uh, the flux would be equal to zero. Okay? And especially if there's no charge, charged place at anywhere here, then the divergence, which is the, the density of the flux, okay, uh, is going to be zero. Okay, so, uh, so what I want to say is that if no charged particle is present in the region, then the divergence of the vector field E would be zero because there's zero flux, right? You get that? Does that make, make sense? Okay. If you accept that there's a relationship between divergence and flux, just like that, then you can accept that, right? Yeah. Which is, I, well, I want to prove that, okay? So don't, don't worry about that. Okay. Let's say we do understand the relation between divergence and the flux then divergence of the electric field must be zero. But then, what is this? This is nabla dot, and E itself is gradient of U. Okay. okay. What is this thing again? Well, let's, let's first remove the minus, because this, this is uh, linear. You can just bring the minus outside, and you, you can get rid of it. So we know that the shape of the electric potential when there's no charged particles present inside that domain will be just like that, okay? And then, <clears throat> uh, remember this is, uh, U is a function, and gradient of U is a vector field, so it's like uh, U differentiated by X, and u differentiate by y, and you make a vector out of it. So this is what this is what gradient is. Okay? And you still have to do a dot product with the nabla round x round y, right? and that has to equal to zero. How do you the dot, how do you do the dot product again? Can you tell me? So dx ux dy dy. So multiply them and then you add them, right? So what do you get? You take u x, which is differentiated by x already, but you differentiate one more time by x. Right? Uh, you differentiate u y, differentiate again by y, 
push a UYY and you add them together, set equal to zero, which is Laplace. Laplace equation. This is the Laplace equation. So what does that mean? It means There's no that source. Right? Yeah, so the Laplace equation gives you an, uh, an equation for the shape of the potential function where, when there's no source inside the thing. So uh, in, the, in the first introduction, I asked you to picture the following. If you have 0, 0, 0, and 10, what, what's the shape of the solution, right? Now, uh, if you view it in the, the way of the electric potential, electric potentials are measured in who took who, physics too? Who took physics too? Nobody took physics. You took, okay. Electric potential is measured in what units? That was two semesters ago. Ah, okay. All right. Good excuse. All right. Volts. Okay. Yeah. 10 volts, 0 volts, 0 volts, 0 volts. Okay. So if you have 10 volts applied to a plate, and these are 0, uh, and it, it, these are earth, earthed, like earth, if you're earthed, then it's called 0, right? Then you can think about the shape of the electric potential at different points of this plate. And that will be the solution that we talked about, the Laplace mm -hmm. equation. We do the experiment and that you can yeah. you can actually do the experiment with the with the plate where yeah, you have to do that so for this huh? lab. You can yeah. you can do that, yeah. yeah. You can do that. And you can measure different points and, and you can use a voltage meter to figure out the voltage mm -hmm. and you'll get exactly this, this thing. Okay. So that, that's what Laplace differential equation gives you. Okay. And this is a very important concept that appears again and again in engineering, math, and physics. It just applies in so many different places.